How's it going everyone? This is Dr. Hefe and welcome to another Crusader Kings 3 tutorial video. In this video we're going to be looking at my playthrough of Alfred of Wessex and I'm going to give you some tips on how to get from the early game into this mid game where you're going to be rolling in gold, prestige, piety, and renown. Now one tip is to increase that development in your capital county. You can go here to your council, set increase in development in county, and you want to put that at your capital. That's going to increase the amount of taxes as well as levies that you get, and your capital county already gains a boost to tax and levies. As you can see, realm capital just giving you a flat boost. Uh, rel levies, you get realm capital plus 20%. So all of these boosts kind of grow on each other, and it makes it really strong to increase that development. Now, not only is it helping out your capital county, but if you have your neighboring counties, part of the duchy that you hold, they're also going to be increasing their development. We don't have our steward here increasing the development, but we get a boost from the neighbors. And then all these percents multiplied on top give us a plus two monthly growth in an area that already has 41 development. Now, not only is development good for increasing taxes and levies, but it increases the rate at which you research innovations. So if I scroll over here, we can see that you gain 0.9 progress each month. There's a base amount as well as the average development of all counties that have your culture. Uh, let's talk a little bit about innovations as well. So if you want to quickly unlock innovations, so as you can see, we unlocked Late Medieval at 12.05, which is the quickest you can do it if you've unlocked all the other texts already uh, in the um, High Medieval. So what I like to do is just go into the Scholarship um, Focus uh, and grab the Scientific Perk. A plus 35% Cultural Fascination Progress bonus is huge over time. You don't have to grab a ton of perks down here, but just grabbing this one will be great if your ruler lives a long time. Now, how do you get your ruler to live a long life? You know, if we look back at my character's lineage, we see that, you know, they've lived a long time. Look, our great grandfather lived to be 95. The person before that, 84, 82. Um, all right, some of these guys died young, but how do we get, you know, two guys who live so long and this poor guy who died from uh, the Black Plague? What you can do is get the blood legacy. Now, octogenarians give your all members of your dynasty plus five life expectancy years. They're going to live way longer. Also, when you go down this, you're likely to get good traits for your characters, such as, you know, Herculean or Robust, which gives a nice boost to your character's health. Now, health determines, you know, about when they're going to pass away. You can also, if you're in the learning field, you know, you already grabbed scientific, go down the whole of body perk path. You get healthy, that's a medium boost, and then if you unlock whole of body, it's another medium boost, going to make your characters live longer. Another thing is that once you unlock, you know, getting a lot of good congenital traits from the blood legacy, you can unlock the strong blood trait. So if I go in here and see the dynasty modifiers, strong blood gives your health a small boost. So all these small boosts together enable your leaders to live a long time, which means that perks that you grab, you know, one-off perks will have a much um, larger effect for your realm because they're going to live that much longer. Now, talking about money, how can we get all this money to be rolling in? Well, once you have around 2,000 gold, you're going to want to upgrade all the buildings. You're going to want to build all the buildings. You're going to want to upgrade all the buildings and all your primary holdings. Now, this can be done very quickly and cheaply if you go down the architect tree. Now, this cutting cornerstones is reducing the amount of gold that it's going to cost to build the buildings. Then you get the professional workforce, which decreases the construction time. Now, buildings take a long time to build in CK3, so decreasing the time by 30% is huge. Finally, once you get down to the architect, you're re reducing the gold cost again, as well as the build cost again. 
So now you're having a huge reduction in the cost of buildings as well as the time it takes to build buildings. So, you know, with 2,000 gold, you can keep building buildings very cheaply. And by the time that they're built, you'll have enough money to keep, you know, building the next level up and keep on improving and upgrading them. Another way to gain money is by ransoming prisoners. I have some prisoners right now. They want to be ransomed. Fine. 10 gold. Whatever. But you can ransom prisoners from sieges. And we're going to talk about sieges in a little bit. <laughs> I just I've had a pause there because I'm like, oh man, I want to say so much about sieges. But we're going to get into that in a minute. And if you're a Catholic ruler, just keep asking the Pope for gold. He'll give you money. It just keeps stacking up and stacking up. Now, talking about being a Catholic ruler, you know, we are staying Catholic, even though being Catholic is pretty hard. I would actually suggest, you know, converting to a heresy or uh, reforming a religion, founding your own religion is a good idea. But we're staying Catholic because we want to complete the Mend the Great Schism. That, are, that is our late game goal. Now, how do we keep all of our vassals Catholic? Like, all of this Catholicism is pretty much from Britannia. Even France, the Empire of France, which was Catholic for the longest time, has converted to the Lollard heresy. So what I do is I go into the find character, and I just uh, scroll down till I see somebody, you know, who's not Catholic. And I'm like, hey, I want to demand your conversion. They might accept. Now, because we have so much money, it makes it very easy to force them to convert. We can send them 100 gold. It makes him much more likely. Now he's 100%. Now, when you demand conversion, sometimes they'll ask for a payment to convert. I find it's sometimes better to just, you know, send the gift, get that 100% chance right away, and, you know, just get them to convert. And this is kind of annoying to, you know, have to go into here, search for characters, uh, for you know pay them to convert basically but it does help keep all of these you know different factions that pop up under control uh, another thing is that if you demand conversion and they refuse and they're your direct vassal you gain an imprisonment uh, reason because they refuse to convert and if they're, you know, small counts or dukes, it's fairly easy to just roll in there, siege them down, and then put them in prison. Or if you, you know, go down the dread tree, let's, let's look at that. You know, you get the prison feudal complex, very easy to imprison people. Then once you release them, when you release the prisoner, you can demand conversion on release. Now, in order to do the Mend the Great Schism, we're going to have to, you know, take some areas from the Damascids. And they are our late game rival. They're the one realm that has more military strength than us. It says similar, but they have slightly more military strength than us. Uh, but we were able to beat them in a Great Holy War to grab Jerusalem for another member of our dynasty. She is giving us some great benefits. You know, it gives you more renown from having another king. And holding Jerusalem gives you a plus 5% to your total renown gained. Uh, so how do we win this great holy war despite being outmatched militarily? It's these siege weapons. And we're going to get to them soon. We're going to see it. We're going to see it soon. Um, expanding. Expanding from just the isles of Britannia to, you know, through Spain into Africa going through Scandinavia, now through Hungary. One of the benefits of having strong vassals, king tier vassals, is that they're going to want to expand their own domain, which, you know, expands your domain, being their emperor. And, yeah, they do that through holy wars. They set up beneficial marriages, so, you know, their sons are inheriting land. So it's always good to have some strong vassals that will help you do the work of expanding. Another way to expand, besides Holy Wars, Holy Wars is super strong, especially if you're going up against, you know, this was all Norse faith, we have some Sumanesco faith, different faiths is great to uh, use those Holy Wars, but we're getting into these Orthodox, and you can't use Holy Wars against them because they're Christian. But what you can do is go into the diplomacy uh, lifestyle and get these three perks for diplomat. So, thoughtful, whatever. We just need it to get down to here. You're able to use the Ducal Conquest Causes Belli. So, if there's a duchy that's uncreated, you can seize counties in order to 
grab whatever whatever's underneath that duchy title that wasn't created. You can also force vassalize. So any ruler that has um, three or less counties, you can just go in and take them apart. Now, for some reason, the Byzantine Empire has imploded, uh, probably due to some religious falling out. As you can see, Orthodox, we have Polishian, Iconoclast. Something happened, they exploded, but we've just been rolling through here and eating up all the remains. Like, this was all Byzantine at one point, but now it's all becoming part of Britannia. So once we get to Constantinople, which is one of the parts of the uh, Men the Great Schism, you know, we're going to... We're going to be able to eat that up and then fight against the Damascus. Damascusids are our rivals here. So let's see how, you know, we can just expand very quickly. So we can do this forced vassalization. I, I mean, we could also do the Ducal Conquest, but I want to do forced vassalization. He's Catholic. Like, we don't really have anything to care about. So we can declare this war. Um... One great thing is setting up a rally point near to where you want to go invade and click on it and click the raise local levy. Now, if we looked at this guy, he's got 892 soldiers. We do not need 40,000 guys to go wreck this guy. In fact, we don't even need these 3,000 guys who are gathering here. But, you know, it's, it's just quicker to click raise local army than raising this guy and then, you know, splitting in half and disbanding the other one. We can just raise this local army. Um, uh, okay, some... Yes, we have people showing up. We really don't care. People that we ransomed off, we're getting money for them. So, why create local points? Because it's going to save you so much money. And also they... Uh, what, is it? what is it called? Muster. They muster much more quickly the lesser amount that you grab. Secret exposed. Oh my goodness. How many sinners have we seen <laughs> throughout our lifetime? But now, wait. Let's look at how quickly we siege this down. Seven days. Seven days with our 240 trebuchets. So this is... I think this is like the, the most... Biggest, greatest tip is to build siege weapons. Just do it. Like, I only have two full trebuchet men-at-arms regiments... And it is taking these sieges from, you know, what would be maybe a month or two months down to, like, a week. It's it's crazy. The, the f slowest part of a war is actually walking from one place to another. The sieges are so short. We're going to be able to take two of these lands before he even, like, gets one month into his siege on us. Uh, some more decisions. Uh, sure, we'll... we'll We'll threaten him, whatever. So yeah, like just just look at that. It's amazing, it's so quick. We'll, we'll gain a weak hook, why not? If you watch my golden hooks video, we know we can sell it at some point. And there we go, enforced demands. Just, just add two more counties to it, it's fine. No worries, like barely any prestige cost. That war was done, like in a minute. It's, it's amazing how quickly you can have your wars done. And that quickness in sieging was what allowed us to beat the Damascusids. We went in here and sieged all the land before their army, which was chasing, I think, like the Empire of France. Their army was getting their butt kicked. And, you know, these guys were chasing them all over here. And we just snuck in here, sieged everything down, got enough war score to enforce our demands. All right, those are my tips. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if I missed out on any tips or, you know, you guys have any tips for me. I'd love to know it. I would love to know. Um, I will make an update once we grab these lands, hopefully beat the Damascusids and get to the point where we can mend the Great Schism. And I'll let you know if there's anything that I learned during that time and if I have any other new tips for you all. Um, until then, hope you... You know, keep it on enjoying this game. Do well. Have your rulers be wealthy and prosperous. And as always, for you out there, do remember to take care of yourself.